Hi guys, this is Wave618. It's the uh, 16th of November 2018, just approaching um, 20 to 8 in the evening GMT. Alright, so long due an update on Bitcoin. Um, it's been a while and yeah, I've not been doing too many updates whilst Bitcoin has just been messing around going sideways. Uh, a lot of a, a, an extreme lack of volatility of recent. However, the last few days, obviously, we've seen a bit of action. Uh, I have been posting a few comments on Twitter just to keep people updated. Um, but really, it's been uh, playing out exactly how I had forecast. I mean, I was expecting price to come down lower. So that's why I didn't see the need to post anything too urgently because really, um, you know where I'm from my previous videos and Twitter posts, you know what I'm looking at. Um, what I'm forecasting with regards to where price is going but today I think we'll do a bit of an update I'll explain how we can break down the shorter term wave count as well um, and we'll just reinforce the targets as well we'll, we'll discuss those further um, but yeah so for those of you who are new to my channel and aren't familiar with my <coughs> wave count so um, yeah, basically I've been looking at this whole play out to be a big WXY with this being W, X finishing here, and I'm, I'm just waiting for Y to play out now. Um, okay, so the X wave is a uh, descending triangle, just to quickly draw that for you. So this would be our uh, the base of the triangle, and then we've got our descending line connecting the highs So coming down like so. So that's the top part of the triangle, that's the bottom. You can see this is A, B, C, D, and E. Now, a lot of you will say, well, why the hell isn't B wave touching the base of the triangle? Um, well, it, that would be an ideal situation if the B wave was touching the base, but the criteria for a triangle is that only two of the, um, each side of the triangle only needs to get hit twice, which uh, the criteria has been met for. So I'm quite happy to call that a descending triangle. It was a similar play out in 2014. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. And the reason it's significant, it helps you to plot the um, Fibonacci extension for this Y wave. So if that's our W, that's X, and then Y is gonna play out next. So I'm looking at uh, wave Y being approximately a 0.382 extension of wave W. So if we plot that out, you get something like that with uh, the 0.382 being around 3200. And um, yeah, so that's one of my targets, that 3200. And it's also the base of this order block that you can see here, this demand order block. So this, we're on the daily time frame that's been plotted out using these um, the bodies of these candles. And this is a very strong order block because look at the price action that came out of it. You got this consolidation here and the resultant price action took us all the way up here. So <clears throat> it's a very significant order block. Uh, we're at a smaller order block here. You can see this is an order block. There's um, the bodies of the candles here, and but it only brought us up to here. So it's not as significant an order block and it won't take as much um, effort to overcome this to the downside. Uh, we currently have broken through it, we're just resting at the base of it now. We'll zoom in and talk about that further. Um, but yeah, this is just explaining my WXY uh, and how I'm looking at a potential Y wave extension of a, a 0.382, bringing us to 3200. Okay, um, that said, there is going to be some resistance prior to that, uh, in particular around the 4300 level. And I'm going to explain a couple of reasons why I'm looking quite closely at that level. So first of all, if we zoom out and look at the whole move up, so the move started following the Mt. Gox crash in 2014. Crash brought us down here. And so if we do a Fib retracement from the bottom here, which is at 153, and take it all the way to the top, and we can see the 0.786 retracement is at that 4300 level. Okay, so that's our next fib retracement to get hit. You can see we've broken the the 0.618, which is at 7500. So next target is your your 0.786. So just keep that number in mind, 4300. Uh, and let's zoom back in. 
Okay, so another reason why 4300 is significant. Um, let's stick on the chart, the volume at price. So we can see here, there's obviously a big spike here around 6400 um, and price consolidated that level for some time. Uh, the next big spike below that is at 4300 okay so a lot of volume a lot of transactions traded at that level 4300 which again is another reason why it's likely to act as a significant level um, but there's something else interesting that I've noticed um, and we'll touch on that now um, so just taking cleaning up the chart a little bit um, <clears throat> we can go back on our log time frame now this was our W wave it's made up of three waves down okay now, an interesting way of determining how far the um, the set the third wave will go. This is a three-wave move here. Okay. Now, the way in determining the Fibonacci extension or projection in this case uh, of the third wave is by just if we do a Fib projection of our first wave. So, starting here, we look at our first wave. Okay, I've drawn that wrong. I want to do a fib projection, so I've got to draw it the other way, sorry. So to do our fib projection, take your Fibonacci retracement tool, start it at the bottom of the wave, so it's at this level. I'm just going to bring it to the sides so it's a bit clearer. And then you want to bring the top of it to the top of the where the wave started. Okay, now look at the 1.618 level. So it brought us to this 5900 level, and you can see, look, we've got a big bounce off that level. Okay, so this is basically a Fibonacci um, projection of this first wave of the wave down, of the three waves down. Um, another way you can plot these uh, Fib projections is basically the same as a Fibonacci extension that is extended from its origin. So if we do a Fib extension, bring it down to this level, the bottom of the wave and then just extend it from where it originated, you'll find we get the exact same, it should line up exactly. Um, so it's very fiddly at the moment because we're using the log chart, but you'll find if you play around with it, it'll be absolutely identical. So the 1.618 should still be at the 5900. Um, but yeah, so just keep that in mind. So the f that's useful for determining how far down um, this wave, our final leg down is going to go because I've got this Y wave. I believe this might be our first wave of the Y wave. This is our second and we're, we're now in our third wave. So if we do a Fib projection, uh, so we start at the bottom of our first wave, which is here at this level, bring it to the top. So the 1.618, it's around that 40, you know, almost at that 4300. Okay, so that's another reason to justify 4300. So I've given you three reasons there. So, certainly, a reason to uh, if you are short Bitcoin, which I'm sure a lot of people are at this point, um, certainly I would look to take profits at 4300. There's a lot of reasons that uh, there could be um, a lot of demand coming in at that point. That said, it can come down uh, lower. Um, so yeah, this is the, the major order block that I've drawn out. This is the bottom of it where the body on the daily chart, the bodies are closing here. Uh, and I've got this as the top. Uh, so the top of that was around 41.50. Okay, so another important level. But first, the next target for me is 4300. Okay, just keeping it simple. Um, and then ultimately, I would not be surprised if it came down to 3200. Would I short from 4300 to 3200? Probably not. Um, just because, as I say, 4300 is a strong level. And I'd really want to see more price action. I'd want to see what the chart is telling me to decide uh, whether it's going to come down lower or not. Um, all right, uh, let's just stick a bit of volume on the chart just so we can see clearly. Um, so it's a bit faint on my chart, but you can see nice spike in volume here. We had very low volume during all of this consolidation. 
And as I said in my last video, any price movements on low volume are insignificant. Okay, so now we've got a price movement, it's on high volume, so it's significant. So this downward move is significant, it means that it supports the downward trend essentially. Um, just going off pitchforks, which you all know is a major part of my analysis. Um, so it's always important to be on the right scale when using your pitchfork. So I plot my pitchfork um, using the first three pivots, that's including the, the first two waves. So it's the start of the first wave, the end of the first wave, and the end of the second wave. And um, we're using a shift pitchfork. You can tell from the, the origin, it's right uh, in, the ver same, in the same vertical axis as our first pivot. And it's halfway between the first pivot and the second pivot when looking at the vertical axis here. Uh, so that's how you know it's the shift pitchfork. And you, uh, we discussed in my last video how I wasn't, I wasn't concerned about this breach of this upper median line here. And the reason is pitchforks are designed to act as guidelines. They're not buy and sell signals. So as soon as the, the pitchfork gets hit, that doesn't mean you should automatically put on a short position. You always need to combine it with something. And what I combine it with is Elliott Wave. I combine it with order blocks. Uh, so it's that confluence of indicators that I look for when placing a trade. And as I say, I'm fundamentally biased. Uh, I think I've made that pretty clear over a long period of time now. Um, so uh, yeah, I wasn't going to go bullish just because this upper median line got broken. And um, that said, it's also important to look at co uh, correlating charts. So other altcoins are important to look at. So I was looking quite closely at Ethereum and I actually even, I prefer this pitchfork even more to the pitchfork on Bitcoin. Um, <clears throat> so what you can see here, I've got this as a WXY playing out with this being W, X and Y is probably still not in, it's not formed its bottom yet. Um, and yeah, so this pitchfork is using our first two waves. So the start of the first wave, start of the second wave, uh, sorry, end of the first wave, start of the, uh, and the end of the second wave. And yeah, again, shift pitchfork, see it acted as really nice resistance here, here, then we went down and tested our median line, wicks down below it, then, you know, hovered around our upper median line, tried to make uh, a run through to the upper warning line. And at one point I was thinking we were going to make it to the upper warning line. In fact, if you plot on further lines, it made it to the 1.5. Okay. Um, so th the blue line is the one line, the one standard deviation away from the median line. And the dotted line is two standard deviations away. So it reached actually 1.5. If you plot that on, you can have a look for yourselves. But um, yeah, so we're currently here. I do expect it to come down at least to test the, uh, the median line. Um, and these horizontal lines, these, this is a Fibonacci retracement I've done here. Now, you're probably wondering what these numbers are. So, first of all, uh, we bounced off the 0.886. So, what is 0.886? It's, a, um, it's the square root of the 0.786. And you're probably wondering, why am I doing that? Why am I doing the square root? That's, and the reason is, that's how we figure out these uh, Fibonacci ratio numbers. The 0.786 is not just a made up number that people say that uh, is significant. It's actually the square root of 0.618. Um, so if you keep doing the square root, you get these numbers. So 0 0.941 is the square root of 0.886. So I'm thinking potentially we could come down and test this level. Of course, that would mean quite a significant drop in price to almost half what it currently is. We're currently at $177 and that would be talking about a 50% um, a drop further to, to bring it to around $88. So that is a big drop and um, I'm not saying it is going to come down that far. It might just come down, wick down and then go back up with a big um, maybe monthly close above the 886. Um, and then we can still say the 886 level was significant rather than it having to reach this 0.941. Um, and if we do a Fibonacci extension, so if we look at our 
W wave came down to here and the Y wave could be a Fibonacci extension with a one-to-one -one ratio around the 109. So that's another target to look at. Uh, there is an order block around here. So certainly some increased significant levels here. <clears throat> so that could also act as resist, uh, support, which coincides with this uh, 0.941 level. As I say, it is a steep drop. Could it happen? Yes, certainly it could happen. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so just taking that off, taking that off, let's just go back to our Bitcoin chart. Um, so yeah, I've explained about my targets. Let's just zoom in on this bit of price action here, just so we can uh, explain the count a little bit better. As I say, of the Y wave, the Y wave I'm expecting to be a three wave move down, as it was with the uh, W wave. Um, so I'm expecting, I think this may be our first wave in here. And then I believe we've seen, this is our second wave. And in fact, our third wave may have started at this point. With this being the first wave of that third wave. And this being a regular flat, A, B, C. And then of our final wave, of our Y wave, this could be our a one, and then some kind of expanded flat, A, B, C. And that's a third wave down. Now, <clears throat> that's one way of looking at it. Um, I've got also, I've got a new pitchfork to put on here. So let's just plot that one on. So I drew it earlier. They're quite fiddly to draw pitchforks. You know, you've got to go in magnet mode. So I've, I did it in advance. Um, so as I say, I've got this as a, an initial wave down. That's our second wave. Yeah. So when you get your two waves, as I say, it looked like some kind of complex expanded flat with that being a A, B, C as our wave two. Um, so this was our first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, then I've drawn this, uh, this is an original pitchfork, and you can tell because the median line is originating from our first pivot. Um, and when you're using an original pitchfork, it generally means there's a steep decline in price, yeah, which generally suggests it's an impulsive move. And you can see at the warning line, we found, um, we found support. Okay, so it came down to here. Uh, and I was involved in a short, and I, I, I was taking profits when we first got down to around here. Why? Because we hit the warning line. I knew that was a reasonable place for price to start uh, bouncing slightly, so in a, in a bit of a dead cat bounce fashion. Uh, so right now we're at the, um, the lower median line of this pitchfork. I mean, this is an aggressive move down. It may just roll over from here. We are testing the lower uh, boundary of this order block. Um, that said, it could come up and test this median line. There is another significant line I want to show you. So, again, I've prepared it already, so we'll just put that on. So this dotted line, this is the halfway point in our order block. Okay, so that often it represents, you know, where the the bulls and bears have found a stalemate. And generally, the, the rule is with these order blocks is that when you're above the halfway point, you want to be leaning towards the bullish side. And when you're below it, you should be leaning to the bearish side. Um, so if you actually zoom in, let's go really far in. Let's go on the 15 minute chart. Um, so there's a very nice bounce straight off the, the bottom of the order block. I did put that on Twitter when it happened because it was quite satisfying to see um, that this price level got respected very nicely. We then bounce straight back off this halfway point. So as I say, the halfway point is a significant level because the bias leans to the uh, upside when we go above the line, whilst it leans to the, the lower side when we're below the line. So obviously the, the bears are going to defend this level, trying to keep price below it. So, and then you can see price bounced off it. We breached through 
um, the base of this order block. Then we tested the, the lower warning line. Uh, then we came back up to the, uh, the lower median line. Again, a bit of a retest of the warning line. And now we're just hovering around the base of this order block. Um, <clears throat> and that suggests we could easily roll over from this point. So there's a couple of reasons. We, we're at this, often you'll find the lower end of the, the order block will be good um, bearish resistance. On top of that, we've got this lower median line will act, which will act as resistance. Um, so yeah, a couple of reasons for a, a short term short um, around this level. That said, it could retrace higher and you could have a tight stop. So if you did, did get it wrong, it wouldn't be a, a huge loss um, because price could potentially come up test this um, median line here. All right, so that's just discussing. So we've discussed all my favorite indicators, really. We've talked about volume, we've talked about pitchforks, we've talked about order blocks, we've talked about Elliott Wave. Um, we've thrown in this, what we call equilibrium line for the order block. Um, I've talked about my targets. So zooming out on the daily, we can see that better. Um, yeah, so as I say, first target 4,300 um, and then I would probably wouldn't trade it, but I would not be surprised if price came down to 3,200. Um, yeah, I think we'll leave it there. I think I'll wrap it up. I don't want the video to go on too long. I've tried to speak quickly so that we don't drag the video on too long. There was a lot to talk about. Um, it's a fantastic chart, very interesting to look at, uh, and I'll be monitoring it closely. Expect, um, yeah, more regular videos and um, tweets from myself, especially as you know, Bitcoin is livening up now. We've got volume coming back in. We've got volatility coming back in. And um, some people probably think that we're probably going to see a lot the volatility, you know, uh, reduce again. I don't think so. Once you see this volume come in after a big drought in volume. <clears throat> That suggests it's here to stay at least for some, you know, a reasonable period of time. So I expect it's not going to take too long before we come down to 4,300. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm looking out for. Um, I'll be monitoring Ethereum just as a correlating chart also to give me a guide as to where price, where price is going to be going. Um, I'm not going to do a general market overview in this video. I think it will drag on too long, but the general, I still expect this, the, the, mar the general markets are looking weak right now. Um, they really are. Um, yeah, as I say, I'm not going to throw that in with this video. Um, but yeah, I've been, as I say, I've been pretty quiet of recent and I've been utilizing that time to work on a course uh, and it's a pretty big course, to be honest. Um, uh, I think it's, it's approaching, um, almost 30 videos, um, really explaining all of my knowledge that I use in trading, uh, all the main indicators. Uh, and the most important thing is you can find on YouTube people explaining these indicators. And obviously um, some of it's useful, some of it's noise. But that's one of the biggest issues in trading. You don't know who to listen to. You don't know who's talking rubbish or not. Um, so yeah, that's why a mentor is always useful. It can save you a lot of time and energy. Um, but what is the important thing is people, you can talk about individual indicators, but no one, I don't often hear people talking about what these indicators really mean. What are they showing us? I mean, the pitchfork is not just a, a pitchfork showing us, it's not a buy and sell signal, for example. It's just a marker of trend, which should always be used with things like moving averages. Um, and it needs to have confluence. You shouldn't trade it alone. You should use something like Elliott Wave. Again, with order blocks, there's people that trade just using order blocks, and yeah, it's good for f knowing when to get in. But how how do you if without using something like Elliott Wave or Pitchforks, you don't know how how far that trade is going to go. Um, so it's and so they they often rely on trading things like the. The, the average true range, you know, three times the ATR will be where they take profits because they've got nothing else, no other knowledge. They could, they might look at another order block where they might take profits. But I really find that you need to combine 
significant indicators, uh, pitchforks, order blocks, Elliott wave. I find that that's my favorite combination. Um, and I find it's useful, it works. Um, so yeah, my um, this uh, course that I'm working on, it's gonna explain how I put everything together. It's gonna play, um, also refer to things that I call soft skills. So things like trade management, risk management, the kind of things that don't interest you as much as a trader. The main things that we all wanna learn about as a trader is you know, how do I put my indicator on? How do I, um, and when can I click buy? When can I click sell? That's the first thing that we look into as traders and it's just because we're so eager to make money. Uh, but really you wanna develop these soft skills first and it takes a, a disciplined uh, trader to, to really realize that. And obviously um, the, I find the people that are more risk averse are the ones that will do well in trading. Uh, those that are a lot more aggressive are the ones that, you know, they have a short lifespan in the in the trading uh, industry. So yeah, trade management, risk management, these kind of things are so crucial to understand, uh, especially when you're starting off um, as a trader. So I've really uh, gone into depth on those. I've gone into depth on uh, macroeconomics. It's good to have some degree of fundamental knowledge. You don't need a, a degree in finance to trade. And in fact, too much knowledge about finance can actually be a detrimental thing because that will, um, that will take the attention away from the, the importance of charting. Um, the charting is crucial um, if you're going to be a technical analysis trader, but some degree of knowledge of fundamentals is important uh, to capitalize on catalysts, uh, knowing when to be careful and uh, being aware of when this um, fundamental information is coming out, these scheduled news releases is very important because they can easily wipe your trade out. Um, so yeah, there's a whole lot of things to understand in trading. There's a hell of a lot to talk about. Um, and indicators are just the, the tip of the iceberg, really. So yeah, the course is really there to uh, help people from an entry level through to you know experienced traders just to help them with their trading. Uh, so that, that won't be too long before that comes out. Um, as I say, I've been utilizing this time that uh, Bitcoin's been quiet to really uh, focus on that. Uh, and it's coming to, coming to an end, so it won't be long until you see that. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the content. Take care.